Hello dear students, welcome to the program. The topic chosen for the lecture is Wood's Dispatch on Education 1854. The objectives set for the lecture are to discuss Wood's Dispatch on Education 1854, to have a look over the contribution of Charles Wood in the development of higher education in India, to get acquainted with the salient features of Wood's Dispatch on Education and lastly, to know about merits and demerits of Wood's Dispatch. Dear students, many changes in Indian education took place between 1813 to 1853. A stage had reached when a comprehensive survey of the whole field of education in India was indispensable. Since the Charter Act of 1813, several educational experiments have been issued. Different agencies had involved themselves in the spread of education and various policies proposed created controversial issues and needed careful consideration. It was high time to review the past practices and in their light propose educational reconstruction for future. The company has to take orders after every 20 years from the British Parliament and in each order something was written about the education in India. In the order obtained in 1813, a sum of rupees 1 lakh was sanctioned for the development of education in India. Again in order of 1833, the sanctioned sum of rupees 1 lakh was increased to rupees 10 lakh yearly. Therefore, when time for the charter of 1853 came, the directors of the company thought for laying down a definite policy in regard to educational matters in India. The committee reported clearly that the question of Indian education should not be ignored any longer and its development will not be in any case harmful to British Empire. The suggestion of the committee was favorably considered by the board of directors. As Mr. Wood was the chairman of the board of control, so the declaration was christianized as Wood's Educational Dispatch. It decided the educational policy of the company, though written by John Stewart, as it said, it was named as Wood's Educational Dispatch and has a very important place in the history of education in India. Dear students, let's have a look over the main recommendations put forward by Wood's Dispatch. Wood's Dispatch is a long report of 100 paragraphs in which all the important educational points have been dealt in detail. Sir Charles Wood declared that in India, the British had to deal with a race of people slow to change bound up by religious prejudice and antiquated customs. Therefore, the British approach to the subject required a change for which he made the recommendations in his dispatch, which included Number first, government's acceptance of educational responsibility. The dispatch for the first time clearly accepted that the responsibility of education in India lies on British government. Wood in his dispatch mentioned that among many subjects of importance, none can have a strong claim to owe attention than that of education. Then second, aim of education. The dispatch defined the aim of education keeping in with the interests of Indians and British rule. The dispatch maintained that education is to raise intellectual fitness and moral character of Indians. At the same time, it was to prepare them to become supporters of British rule. Next was establishment of Department of Public Instruction. Wood's dispatch recommended the creation of a separate Department of Public Instruction in each of the five provinces of Bengal, Bombay, Madras, Northwest provinces and Punjab. The department in each province was to be under the officer to be called the director of public instruction. He was to be assisted by 
inspectors of the school who would make periodical reports of educational work in their respective provinces. Next was establishment of universities. The dispatch suggested that universities should be established at Calcutta, now called as Kolkata, Bombay, now called as Mumbai, Madras, now called as Chennai. The dispatch recommended that government should establish universities which could be both affiliated and also examining bodies. Each university should have a chancellor and a vice chancellor and should be organized on the pattern of London University which was taken to be as their model. The universities should have a senate to frame rules for conducting examination and controlling funds and professorship for different branches of education. The duties of the university were to be as to grant affiliation to college, to inspect the affiliated college and to raise their standard of teaching, to hold examination and confer degrees, to encourage the cultivation of vernacular language, to organize the departments of Arabic, Sanskrit and Persian. Next recommendation was establishment of graded schools. The dispatch recommended the establishment of a network of graded institutions all over India. The hierarchy of these institutions would be primary school, middle school, high school, college, followed by university. Next was gratinate system. The dispatch recommended that gratinate system should be developed. The private institutions should be given gratinate for increase in teachers' salaries, scholarships, libraries, construction of the buildings, etc. The dispatch proposed to give grants to such schools and colleges as would satisfy government about the stability of their management, impart good secular education, be open to state inspection and agree to any condition which might be laid down for the regulation of such grants. The next recommendation is regarding medium of instruction. The dispatch also dealt with the question of the medium of instruction and declared English as the most perfect medium of instruction, but it should not be insisted upon at all stages. It should be used only when a sufficient knowledge of its use has been gained. It suggested that books of Western literature and science should be translated into vernacular language. Original books should be written and the writers should be rewarded and encouraged. The dispatch gave importance to existing vernacular language because it was through the medium of vernacular language that European knowledge could filter down to masses. Next is training to teachers. Regarding the training of teachers, the dispatch advocated the need for establishing different types of training institutions and giving stipends to teachers under training. It also recommended that the professional training in law, medicine, and civil engineering should come under the direct control of universities. A very important recommendation was given regarding women education. The Woods Dispatch didn't ignore the women education and gave a good tribute to the person who were engaged in this pious work. According to the Dispatch, the importance of the female education in India can't be overrated. It recommended frank and cordial support of the government to the cause of female education and said that schools for females were to be included among these to which grant and aid might be given. One more recommendation was regarding Muslim education. It was found that Muslim community was lagging far behind in education. So concerning Muslim education, Charles Wood has said that Muslims should be encouraged to attain education and various efforts should be made in this direction. Next recommendation was regarding expansion of mass education. 
the dispatch admitted that mass education had totally been neglected. Therefore, the dispatch instructed that useful and practical knowledge should be conveyed to the masses. To achieve this purpose, the dispatch recommended the establishment of increased number of primary schools, middle schools and high schools. It was proposed that scholarship should be awarded to promising candidates. The next recommendation was regarding vocational education. The dispatch pointed out the need of starting vocational schools and colleges for imparting instructions in different vocations. Vocational education may be considered as a necessity in order to prepare children for future life. Dear students, Wood's dispatch had some salient features. One of them is that it was considered as cornerstone and magna carta of Indian education. Wood's dispatch has been hailed as a bold, foreseen and statesman-like document. It holds a unique position in Indian history and development of Indian education. It is said to have laid the foundation of present system of education. H.R. James has called the dispatch the Magna Carta of Indian education. The Charter of Educational Privileges of our country. It is Wood's educational dispatch which decided once and for all all the controversies that were going on in the educational field. As regards the aim of Indian education, the government attitude towards religious education and the medium of instruction and there begins a new era of educational administration, mass education, university education, private efforts in education by introducing the system of grant and aid, teachers and women education. It was indeed the climax in the history of Indian education. Wood's dispatch furnished as a head and a tail in education system of India. Till 1854, the structure of education in India had a body, but no head or tail. It was an education without a foundation or furnish. The dispatch furnished with a head and a tail. The head was to be in the shape of university, the establishment of which was recommended by the dispatch. The tail was to be in the shape of a well-planted system of education as desired by the dispatch. Moreover, it created the Department of Public Instruction and also laid the foundation of graded school. One more feature was that of comprehensive scheme. The dispatch of 1854 is a document of great historical importance. It for the first time outlined a complete and systematic organization of education, beginning from university down to elementary schools. As Lord Dalhousie remarked, quote, it was a scheme of education for all India, for wider and more comprehensive than the local or the supreme government could have been ventured to suggest, unquote. Similarly, in the words of J.P. Nayak, quote, it affords an excellent platform from which we can take a retrospect glance at the past, unquote. Then reorganization of education. On the receipt of Wood's dispatch, the company began to organize education on the lines suggested by it. By 1855, the departments of public instruction were set up in the provinces of Bengal, Bombay, Madras, Northwest provinces and Punjab. In 1857, the universities of Calcutta, Bombay and Madras were founded. The system of grant and aid was introduced, but it was found that during the years 1854 to 1882, nothing was done to train teachers for secondary schools. Courses of study were academic and unrelated to life. There was no provision for vocational courses. 
Mother tongue was neglected as a medium of instruction. Dear students, Wood's dispatch consisted of certain merits. The dispatch of 1854 has some merits which include through Wood's dispatch, the British Parliament for the first time made an attempt to decide the educational policy of India and give it a legal form. The dispatch had clearly laid down the aims of education in India. The dispatch has rejected the downward filtration theory as its uselessness has been proved. It was totally considered useless for Indian education. The dispatch has reorganize the importance and value of Indian literature and culture. The dispatch has laid stress on the translation of the books of Western knowledge into Indian language. The dispatch attracted the attention of government towards the improvement of native educational institutions. Wood also reorganized Indian language as the medium of education along with English. The dispatch has suggested for the establishment of universities at various places like Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. It also led the basis for increasing the number of high schools and colleges. The dispatch also laid great emphasis upon the education of Muslims whose education was extremely in backward condition. In spite of so many merits, the dispatch is also responsible for some glaring defects of the present educational system of this country. The various demerits of the dispatch as reported by S. N. Mukherjee are it introduced a new educational system based on a chain work of schools, colleges and examination under the ultimate control of state. This type of centralized system with numerous departments, files and officers introduced red tapism and robbed the Indian education system for its flexibility. The department put the education under the direct control of government and which finally ended the traditional free teaching work of this country. All the members of the Senate of the universities were to be nominated by government and so sometimes the person ignorant about educational problems become the members of the Senate. This in no way helped the universities to grow. The dispatch has taken the idea of London University as a model for Indian universities. Thus the ancient Indian university system was neglected. It developed the idea of Christianity among Indians through Western education. Thus, Indian religions got disregarded by educated people. According to dispatch, the persons educated on western lines were given preference for services and thus people got much attracted towards reading English and the old educational institutions began to lose their existence. The dispatch did not aim at education for leadership and fostering of the patriotic spirit. As the medium of instruction was English, so the students were bound to understand subjects like history, geography and mathematics etc. Thus the students had to spend larger period for studies. The indigenous educational institutions had to suffer a stepmotherly treatment from the government as well as from the higher classes of the society. Hence, it was not much helpful for the oriental educational institutions. Dear students, we may conclude that Wood's educational dispatch has both merits as well as demerits to a great extent. Some educationists have criticized it severely and have declared it funny to call it an educational dispatch. On the other hand, it has been admired too. It should be admitted that the dispatch didn't organize the present Indian education system and brought order out of misdirected efforts. The government of India has established a separate department 
called educational department which is hierarchy of officers like the education commissioner the director and the zeos so that educational institutions could be properly inspected and the standard could be maintained in short woods dispatch with all its merits and demerits has an important place in the history of modern indian education it is called a valuable contribution to the history of indian education it has contributed much to the organization and stabilization of the present educational system in india thus as a result of this universities were established at bombay calcutta and madras dear students i hope you understood what woods educational dispatch was all about i hope you have enjoyed this program thanks for watching